Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. Uh, we're out here in Chicago, Illinois, a beautiful night outside, probably uh, the best night uh, we've had this calendar year for sure, certainly in the most uh, comfortable to be outside in, and believe it or not, the sky is clear. So I'm out here, uh, probably with worse audio than I might otherwise have if I had opted to uh, stay inside on the desktop computer and run uh, this all remotely. But I'm gonna be out here checking it out. I wanna see what the Sky Atlas feature does with the new ZWO ASI Air update. So I really haven't looked into this. I checked it just to make sure it would actually run on the app, but I haven't looked into the, any of the features and I certainly haven't used it in conjunction with a live telescope that is tracking the sky. So I'm excited to uh, see how it works. Now, by the way, I've already done all of my setup for the night. So I've got the telescope already set up uh, polar aligned. In fact, it's guiding uh, really well, as you can see here in the ASI Air app. And I'm uh, currently on M81, M82. Not currently imaging, uh, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. First though, I do want to play around here. So once you've got the app updated, uh, you can see I'm running version 1.9, 9.53. And you can see on the lower left-hand corner, we have this uh, sort of view of Ursa Major and Cassiopeia with the North Star in between. So we're gonna tap on that window. Now what we can see here is that we're actually looking at a view of what we're already imaging. Now I had tried this out without uh, the mount connected and it was just showing me sort of a general planetarium view. And in fact, if I zoom out here a little bit, you can see that view. Now it had been, uh, when I was running it without anything really connected, just through the ASI air. It was assuming that it was pointed uh, directly at the North Celestial Pole, but here you can see it's actually pointed in a uh, different spot. So let's see what we have here. Interesting, so our kind of field of view is in red and blue is actually where the scope is pointed. Now, interestingly, it's actually showing the rotation of the camera. So it, uh, through its uh, plate solving uh, with polar alignment, and also slewing to this object, uh, which I did without this skyless feature, uh, it already knows uh, where the image is matched up. And in fact, I guess if we you know, kind of take a look at this image, we got NGC 3077 up at the corner. Not really any other identifying uh, parts to orient us by, but if we go back to our view here, this is a rather short exposure, but yeah, up in the corner, you can see uh, one of those other galaxies. <clears throat> in fact, let's run a, a 60 second exposure here, just so we can compare this field of view. Now, one thing I noticed as I was looking at before, there's actually no way to change your time. So it's only gonna be the local time I guess as matched on your device, what's synced to the mount. So I don't think, okay, so the compass is on. So now I can actually use, yeah, use my device to point to other areas of the sky. Okay, turn that off so I can manually slew around the sky. And great, this turns on equatorial coordinates. Okay, that can be helpful. And, oh cool, it's got a, it's got a skyline. Now I wonder if you're actually able to do custom skylines. Uh, <laughs> a few points in here, I may just not know about a feature that's possible with the ASI Air uh, Sky Atlas. Uh, I may just not know. Um, so if that's possible, let me know in the comments and uh, I can try and make a, another video about that. But it would be cool, I guess I set up different places in my yard uh, from time to time actually right up against the house with a nice view to the north tonight because I was only really going to be shooting around at the North Celestial Pole. But if I'm trying to shoot something uh, further south, uh, it might be uh, a little bit further out in this uh, shared yard here. By the way, a lot of people have asked if this is a sidewalk going by my house. And it, it is technically, it's not the full public sidewalk. It's a little walkway that goes be, uh, between the houses uh, a little bit further back from the actual public sidewalk. So it's uh, Still not super secure. I definitely can't leave the scope out on its own and go to sleep. I have to stay up with it and uh, keep an eye on it, uh, usually through my uh, security camera footage. All right, so what do we have here? Our view is here. Let's go back and zoom in. 
Alright, MAD1, MAD2, and 3077, kind of up at the corner. And let's come back out. Okay, so here is, this is an H alpha view, so it's <laughs> possibly not going to really be picking up. Oh yeah, there it is. Up in the corner here. This uh, fuzzier looking dot there is going to be NGC 3077. We could annotate that, but uh, we'll just leave it as is. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm curious if I were to say, oh, I really want to get the framing so I can get say all four of these galaxies in. I might do a little bit of camera rotation or something like that. If I then say go cross is what I clicked. Ah, that was... Probably the wrong thing to click here. Let's see. You can tell the uh, EIF just barely missed my face, so I set this up just perfectly for how it would be uh, the most. So where is this actually going? Getting ready to stop this if it's getting too close. Ah, that's why. <laughs> so I now see that the meridian is right here. So it is actually uh, just going for the meridian flip early. I thought maybe that was a feature here where you can suddenly cross the meridian uh, automatically. All right, so I've got this done. Now, the interesting thing about the rotation is I uh, made another video about uh, planning mosaics and things like that in Telescopius and noted that the it was sometimes hard to tell exactly what your rotation was in the ASI era. That could be a little bit troublesome with the Rasa because it's pretty cumbersome to actually change the, uh, the rotation of the camera on the fly. If you had a, a rotator or something, it would make it uh, quite a bit easier. Uh, but in general, it's just not, uh, not something you want to do. However, with this, you can tell if your rotation is actually matching. This is a fantastic tool to be able to do it. Now, from what I understand, there's no mosaic planning mode in this as of yet. Once again, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Uh, but that would be a fantastic feature to actually add. Now, I'm guessing in plan mode, interesting, I may actually look and see if, if you load an active plan, if it's going to show you where that is in the sky. Anyway, let's see if this matched pretty accurately. We now have NGC 3077 that's going to be up at the top center, and we'll have coming in on the, the lower corner NGC 2976, and MAD2 is going to be pushed off to the side. So I'm certainly seeing NGC uh, 82 pushed off to the side. Ah, right, we did the meridian flap, so it's actually on the bottom center. And then coming in at the corner, opposite corner, I'm seeing a little dim fuzzy here. Once again, the H alpha filter uh, useful if I'm going to be uh, getting uh, some of the M82 um, active regions there, uh, but not as useful here. Maybe I'll run another one minute uh, exposure. And we'll see if that guiding comes back down. In fact, we should probably recalibrate that. Okay, so I think we have that guiding uh, back figured out. So that's recalibrated. I'm actually glad that we are on this side of the meridian now. Uh, over my left shoulder, uh, we're actually seeing, uh, you might be able to see actually in the field of view, uh, Capella in Oride to the Charioteer. And right near there, I've actually got a plan mode uh, from this past season. Ah, yeah, let's test the accuracy here. I want to be right here with this uh, kind of trio of stars up at the corner of the frame. So go cross, I guess that means go to the crosshair. Makes sense. Okay, we're slewing over. And it's going the right direction. That's good. 
And actually, I bet we can see, oh, we can't zoom out, but I wonder if we'll see the, um, yeah, here comes our blue box coming in. Very cool. Nice, actually picking up a little bit of that nebulosity there. And yeah, here, down at the lower left-hand corner, you can see those five stars. Framed up really nicely. I'm noticing this kind of arc of stars on the other side. I wonder if that's accurate to what's shown here. Pretty close. Yeah, I think it's just this view here. Fantastic. Very cool. So one of the things I'm really excited about this for is finding other objects. Sometimes you don't know the object's name. Uh, let's say, or you may know its name, it's um, a common name, but you may not know the NGC number or or something else. In fact, let's go to In the Feet of Gemini. This is a great field of view here. Uh, tell you what, let's go right here. Actually, does it bring up information? It doesn't, okay. Um, Okay, so I want to center. I wonder what a line is. A line scope. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> I'm guessing a line is telling your telescope where it's pointed, saying this is, isn't that. Perhaps. All right, I'm going to zoom out. Uh, let's see. I'm going to center the crosshair. Just wanted to be able to see the the blue view. This is the blue is where the scope is pointed, and then the red view is where the crosshair is. Let me see. Okay, it's going to actually. I'm always centered on the view here, so I can't quite fit both in evenly. But I want to see how it tracks that blue square or blue rectangle. So let's go across. Okay, yeah. Seems about right. Oh, still doing go to. So you can't zoom in or out while go to is happening. Fair enough. It's validating centered or not. Uh, it's taking a bit of time there. Should be visible. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Go to success. Let's check it out. I think it's going to be loading that image here. By the way, I think I switched uh, Wi-Fi signals from <laughs> sitting right here, which would be extremely fast. I think it's actually trying to do station mode on the house, which we're in a bit of a bad spot for that. Let's check it out. Centered. That looks fantastic. That is... Super accurate. Very cool. So let's do a 120 second there. We're gain 139. Let's give it a shot. Why not? So overall, really impressed by this functionality, given the field of view. I suppose the only thing that I am uh, kind of missing from this, uh, maybe a nice feature would be to be able to upload your own panorama, uh, so be able to see what's visible from your uh, location. I know there are other apps that can do that as well. But also a planning mode where I'd be able to uh, go to a different date and a different time, um, I suppose a different location as well, if I knew it was maybe planning a dark sky trip or something, a uh, place far enough away that it would really matter to be able to plan that out and say, okay, well, the Pleiades, you know, is setting over here, and this is what's rising at that hour, and these are the, the good times to be, to be doing that. Now, of course, you can do that in uh, Telescopius. You can import plans for things like that into this. But if that were all able to be done in this uh, really kind of feature-rich uh, feature application here on the ASI Air, that would be pretty fantastic. I would be, be very interested in seeing... Uh, that functionality for for planning, um, imaging session planning within here. 
the ability to create mosaics uh, within the app here, um, create plans perhaps as well. Once again, that may be something that's possible and to be able to uh, maybe add the object, but um, I'm not seeing it uh, immediately here on the, uh, the user interface. Uh, maybe a long press or something is going to do uh, something else. Anyway, this is pretty fantastic. I'm very happy with, uh, with this new feature. I'm going to be playing around with it uh, quite a bit. This is going to be especially useful if uh, maybe we've got a, maybe an hour before something is rising. I can say, OK, well, what can I look at now? Uh, previously, I'd be having to go back out of uh, the ASIR app. I'd be going into Stellarium or uh, I'm browsing Telescopius inside or something. But here, if I'm able to do that within the app and uh, kind of get this fantastic view, I think it's really great. Uh, I think it's also going to be useful, uh, perhaps for some astrophotographers, if they're not quite as uh, familiar with the sky. Um, I, I grew up uh, looking at the sky and uh, really only got into astrophotography after I was very familiar, able to star, star hop to galaxies and clusters and things like that. But if someone is uh, maybe not quite as familiar, they know uh, how to program uh, their software to go to an object that they think is really cool, but they're not maybe quite aware of where it is in the sky, or especially how big it is in the sky. This gives you a good idea of the scale of things relative to, say, the moon or other objects. I think that could be pretty cool. So uh, overall, let's check out how this image went. Yeah, wow. Single two-minute exposure here. Looking good. Very happy with, uh, with how that could be. In fact, yeah, let's get a little bit low there. In fact, let's see uh, what its height is. In the sky, ah, that would be another thing I'd want to see would be, um, oops. That would be another thing I want to see. We've got equatorial coordinates, but I would want uh, local celestial coordinates. Um, so azimuth and altitude as well. I think that would be useful as well to say, okay, here's where uh, this nebula or this cluster is uh, maybe lower than 30 degrees. We set 30 degrees is as low as you want to go uh, for a particular uh, imaging run or something. That might be useful as well. But here I can see, yeah, it's probably a little bit too low to do any uh, useful imaging. But uh, overall, that's a pretty good view and uh, quite happy with that. And uh, a little bit late in the season, but maybe next year we'll uh, get around to that one as well. Well, thanks for stumbling through this with me. I hope this video was useful. Uh, I hope you get a chance to try out this new Sky Atlas feature as well. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it, uh, any other features you think might be useful uh, for it as well. And uh, otherwise, clear skies, uh, hopefully a lot more like this coming up over the next few months, and we'll see you next time.